how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out What Took You So Long by Emma Bunton, easily the cutest spice, uh, launching her solo career here quite a few years ago now, more than a decade ago in fact. God makes me feel old. Anyway, uh, so this song's a really, really great example of pop songwriting. So if you're getting into writing and you want to write in a kind of proper poppy pop pop land sort of songs, then this is a a fantastic example. The structure, the fact that the chorus comes in at almost exactly one minute, the little pop stop, which is the little gap just before the chorus starts, just the whole structure of it is really uh, a really fantastically produced pop tune. So uh, you might want to check that out, the structure and all of those things. Uh, on the guitar, I'm going to be showing you mainly the acoustic part. Uh, I'll mention the electric one as well for those of you that want to get into doing a, like a two guitar thing as well, because it's kind of interesting. Um, so first of all, the chords, uh, the, the chords in the main sequence there, we've got F major 7 for one bar, A minor for one bar, and G for two bars. Now the F major 7, you can either play just the little one using the thinnest four strings, uh, or you can move your third finger over to the fifth string, put your little finger down where the third finger was, and have the fifth string, F major 7, or you can get the thumb wrapped around and have that F bass note as well and be playing all of the strings. I generally will be playing it using fingers one, two, and three, muting the fifth string with my third finger and playing the bass note with my thumb. That would be the most common way I'd be playing this kind of F major seven, but you can really choose whichever one you're kind of capable of and, and you know, whichever one you prefer the sound of, if you can play all of them. So we've got F major seven like that, A minor. Now the G chord, you can go to regular G if you want. That totally works, either using the three fingers or the four fingers. I tend to use the two-fingered G here, uh, which is just using the third finger on the thicker string, which kind of leans over a bit and mutes the fifth string. Open, 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 and little finger. Just because these, this particular chord sequence, you can see if I'm doing this sequence now, I don't have to really move my hand around much to get to the G chord, whereas if I go to the big G, kind of my arm and my wrist all have to change shape. So that's sometimes a good idea to kind of get hit with this uh, particular G chord. So uh, that's the main, main sequence that we got for the intro and the first verse. But uh, while we're on that, let's talk about the strumming as well. So uh, if we've got our F major 7 chord down, the strumming pattern, we've got down, hit. So we've got the percussive hit going on. There's a few lessons on that on the website if you want to go and check it out. But the general idea is that we're going to hit the, the strings with the outside part of the hand like that at the same time as doing a little strum. You need to be able to do that without holding onto the neck. Right? It's not, a lot of people seem to think it's releasing the chord there and kind of hitting like that. And it's, you can kind of do it that way sometimes, but it doesn't work with these open chords. So you need to get into just being able to do it really slowly. Hand hits the strings and then the strum comes down. That's how you learn it as a two-part thing. And eventually you can just do it as one movement. Right? Check out lessons on the website uh, if you want to need a bit more instruction on that one. So the, the strumming progression is down, hit, up, down, up, down, down, hit, up, down, up, down, down, hit, up, down, up, down, down, two and three and four, one, 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 two and three and four. Right, so it's the basic sequence. Sometimes I'm putting definitely a little strum on the end after four. So you end up with one, Two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one. Sometimes it's there, you know. It, it, it changes a little bit during the tune, but that's the main sequence most of the time. And it does give you a kind of a, a nice groove there if you can get that percussive hit on. So that'll be the, the intro goes around that sequence twice. And there's that little kind of guitar riff, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Well, actually, we're going to come back to it in a bit. Definitely not going to try and sing this one, I don't think. Okay, and into the verse. F major 7 to A minor, and they're going to a G chord. Oh, F major 7 to A minor, and the G is going for two bars. Uh, baby, ah, now we've got this other interesting chord, which is a D minor 7. It's not one that I actually teach on the beginner's course, but it's a kind of a cool chord. So nothing on the thickest two strings, then open D, second finger, second fret of the third string, and then we make a little bar with the first finger. It's almost like the thinnest three strings of an F chord, but with an open D string. 
it's called a D minor 7. So we got that as well. The challenge with this when you're doing the strumming is trying not to hit those thickest two strings too much. You know, if you hit the fifth string a little bit, it's kind of okay, but really you don't want to be hitting the thick string. It'll sound pretty horrible. So uh, just be aware of that. So in this, uh, for the pre-chorus now, we've got D minor 7, F major 7, A minor, and G. Same again, D minor 7, F major 7. A minor and G. And then at the end there, one, two, three, four. So strumming on beat one, mute on beat two, and then count it out for two, three, four. Right? So you have a little, the pop stop as we call it, the little gap you have very commonly just before a chorus in a standard pop tune. So we're into the chorus now. So the chorus, sticking with that chord sequence again, so D minor seven. A minor, G, which is a different chord sequence, what am I talking about? D minor 7, A minor, and G. And that is all of the sections, except for the bridge. The bridge uses the same chords as the pre-chorus, but there's a kind of a cool little part going on in the electric guitar as well, which sounds good if you're doing the acoustic rhythm guitar part. Sounds great if you're doing a kind of a duet thing. You've got one guy playing the rhythm guitar, or girl, doing the rhythm guitar part on acoustic, and there's another guitar playing the electric guitar part over the top. That sounds really wicked. So uh, I thought I'd explain these chords to you, just because it's kind of a fun little uh, substitute that you can put in there. Uh, the first chord, instead of uh, it regularly in the pre-chorus, would be a D minor seven. But we can change that to a D7 sus4, uh, which is nothing on the thickest two strings. Open D string, second fret, first fret, third fret. I'm using my second finger, first finger, and fourth finger there. And to get to the next chord, which is an F add nine, we're just putting our third finger down on the third fret of the fourth string. Okay, now we got that's an F add nine. Now, we, if we move our fingers to form a regular A minor chord and leave our little finger down on the third fret of the thinner string, we've got an A minor 7. Now, you can also get the same chord by lifting off your third finger. Leave your little finger down as well, because that's the, kind of the sound that's on the record, but you can lift your third finger off as well. So either with the third finger down or off. doesn't really matter. In, in the book, I, let, I put it down with the third finger off. Uh, but just lately I've been playing it with the third finger on and I'm kind of liking the sound of that, so either one is totally cool. Um, and uh, then we've got a G chord, just the regular two-finger G kind of one. Now, you can strum that. And it's just kind of got, because it's got that high G string ringing out all of the way through, it's kind of a different flavour. But you could also arpeggiate it if you want. So if you've got a two guitar thing, one guy doing the rhythm guitar and the electric guitar just picking out notes. That kind of thing, it'll sound really, really cool, especially a little bit of tremolo, a bit of chorus on the electric guitar and you're, you're, you're right away there. So. Um, that's just a nice kind of additional thing that you can add in there. And while I'm on it, on additional bits, you also might want to check out the little lead guitar line that happens at the start of the tune and a few times in between. It's very simple, just single note stuff. Um, so if you're trying to get into transcribing or whatever, this is the kind of part that you should definitely be uh, not shying away from because it's, you know. Uh <laughs> one might be a little bit hard to work out for some of you, so it's just a C and a G, like a C power chord, and moving your first finger back. That's just, that's the kind of the electric riff at the start, so it's a, it's a really good fun one for doing that kind of stuff. Any of you guys getting into garage band, you know that you can put on a simple drum loop and record yourself playing the acoustic guitar and then go through and learn the electric guitar parts, because a big thing in this pop guitar land is not just learning the one part, it's, it's figuring out the layers that are going on. So trying to listen to it and going, well there's that guitar but there's also a clean electric guitar strumming and there's these other lead lines in there, so it's a good thing to kind of explore. Um, and with that, I think we're pretty much done on this tune. Hope you enjoy playing it and I'll see you for another lesson very soon. Take care of yourselves, bye bye.